When darkness fell over Guam, Marine and Army troops of the 3rd Amphibious Corps had established fragile footholds at Asan and Eget beaches, still miles apart from each other. Neither the 3rd Marine Division, nor the 1st Provisional Marine Brigade, reached their objectives set for the first day. The beachhead was far from secure, and vulnerable to counterattack from the higher ground, which was still, in Japanese hands. Fortunately for the Americans, General Takashina, the island's garrison commander, used the night to move his troops from other areas of the island, and deployed them to strengthen the defensive line, rather than to launch a large-scale counterattack. However, until daylight, the Japanese harassed the Americans, by launching small-scale, but determined counterattacks against them. In the north, where the 3rd Marine Division landed, the Japanese unleashed heavy mortar and artillery fire, shortly after midnight, which continued through the night, and caused all transports to stop unloading activities, at 2.30 a.m. At dawn, reinforced with troops arriving from Ogonia, the Japanese launched an attack, against the division's left flank. Supported by naval gunfire, Marines held the line and drove the enemy back. In this fierce fight, an act of heroism of Private First Class, Luther Skaggs Jr., earned him a Medal of Honor. Skaggs, although severely wounded, led his section through intense fire, and held his position for eight hours, successfully halting the Japanese advance. Throughout the night, in the 3rd Division sector, Marines repelled several other smaller counterattacks. Meanwhile, on the southern beaches, Japanese forces, launched repeated and more severe attacks, which lasted throughout the night. On the right flank of the 1st Provisional Marine Brigade, Hill 40, anchoring the southern corner of the beachhead, was lost twice, but eventually recaptured and held. In the center, a second attack, hit the 1st Battalion of the 4th Marines at 2.30 a.m., when a Japanese infantry, supported by four tanks tried to penetrate the Marine line. With bazookas the Marines knocked out two Japanese tanks, while Sherman tanks, destroyed the other two, forcing the infantry to retreat. Another infantry attack, hit the position of Company A of the 1st Battalion 4th Marines, almost penetrating to artillery position, 400 meters from the beach. Company A, repelled the attack, killing over 200 Japanese, but lost one entire platoon during the battle. Throughout the night, numerous other platoon and company attacks, hit the 22nd Marines on the northern flank, and all of these were easily repelled. In all, the Japanese lost at least 400 men, during the night. With the first light of day, on July 22, 1944, Marines and Army troops, moved forward to secure the hills and mountains in front of them. On the northern beachhead, the battered 3rd Marines, attacked but failed to take Kanito Cliff, on the left flank of the beachhead. Although only about 31 meters high, the terrain on Kanito Cliff, was extremely rugged, and covered by dense vegetation. Moreover, heavy losses suffered by the 3rd Marines, during the first day and night of fighting, also contributed to their failure. The 1st Battalion was down to only 160 men, with its Company A, reduced to only 40 men, while all other battalions were significantly under strength. High losses, forced the 3rd Marines commander, to form a provisional rifle company from the Regimental Weapons Company, and headquarters staff, attaching it to the 1st Battalion, in an effort to take the troublesome cliff. Furthermore, he also requested the 307th Infantry Regiment, still afloat, to reinforce his troops, but General Roy Geiger, commander of the 3rd Amphibious Corps, refused this request, as he was reluctant to commit the rest of the 77th Division in the north, when he knew it would be needed in the south. The 21st Marines, in the meantime, made little progress during the day, in their attempt to move towards Mount Chokchow, and clear the ravine to close the gap, separating them from the 3rd Marines. Strong Japanese opposition, held their advance to a standstill. The 2nd Battalion, suffered 40% casualties during two-day fighting, which resulted in them being pulled back from the line. In the afternoon, two companies of the 3rd Marines, 
finally closed the gap between the two regiments, successfully establishing contact with 21st Marines. On the right flank, the 9th Marines, made good progress advancing south, securing Pitty Navy Yard, and encountering little opposition. At 2.25 p.m., the 3rd Battalion of the 9th Marines, landed on Cabras Island, executing a shore-to-shore -shore assault, seizing part of the island defended only by a handful of scattered snipers, and hundreds of aerial bombs, emplaced as landmines. The Marines secured the island, by the early morning hours, of July 23rd. During the second day of the battle, another member of the 3rd Marines, Private First Class, Leonard Foster, was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor, for clearing the Japanese machine gun positions, that held his platoon's advance. Meanwhile, on the southern beachhead, the 1st Marine Brigade, continued to advance, aiming to expand its beachhead in all directions. The 22nd Marines, advanced north towards their main objective, Borot Peninsula, meeting moderate resistance, until being stopped by a destroyed bridge over the Uja River. Like most rivers on Guam, the Uja River, was narrow and shallow, with high and steep banks, which prevented supporting tanks from crossing, forcing them to be replaced by amphibious tanks. In the center, the 305th Infantry Regiment, reorganized after the night landing, began their attack later in the day, and made good progress, reaching the ridge running northeast from Mount Alifan, and securing the high ground above the nearby road junction, passing beyond the objective line set for the day, during the afternoon. Further south, the 4th Marines, push up the slopes of Mount Alifan, climbing in the open, under fire from the Japanese positions, concealed by thick wood on the top. The resistance was moderate, but the rugged terrain, slowed their progress. However, by the end of the day, a patrol from the 1st Battalion, reached its peak and found it unoccupied. While the 1st Provisional Marine Brigade, fought its way, attempting to secure the beachhead, on July 22, General Geiger, issued an order for the relief of the 4th Marines, by the 306th Regiment, from the 77th Infantry Division, allowing them to reorganize, and join the rest of the brigade for the attack on Orot Peninsula. The following day, the 4th Marines, did not advance, as they were being replaced by the Army Regiment, which lasted all day. It was not until the morning of July 24, that the 4th Marines were relieved by the 306th Regiment, which allowed the 1st Provisional Marine Brigade, to concentrate fully on taking Orot Peninsula. Meanwhile, on July 23, the 305th Regiment, and the 22nd Marines, expanded the beachhead to the north, while further north, the 3rd Marine Division, had made slow progress. The 3rd Marines, had reached the top of Canito Cliff, and adjacent ridges, finding them mostly abandoned. After mopping up the remaining Japanese stragglers, the 3rd Marines, were in no state to advance further. The 21st Marines, made virtually no progress during the day, halted by the fire of carefully hidden machine guns, which were impossible to spot in the rugged terrain full of undergrowth, and covered parts of the completely open ground. On the right, the 9th Marines, made good progress, carefully moving through more open territory, dotted by hills, each of which was a potential Japanese stronghold. During the night, Marines of the 3rd Division, withstood several enemy counter-attacks. By July 24, the 3rd Marine Division, had already suffered more than 2,000 casualties, while making painfully slow progress, and at the same time, the Japanese, were showing no signs of abandoning their defensive positions, situated on the hills and mountains. The division committed all of its resources, having almost no reserve to hold more than 8 kilometers long line, without a solid front line, consisting mainly of strong points spread across a heavy terrain. The same day, on July 24, a small patrol was sent south, along the shoreline, accompanied by amphibious tanks, to contact the 1st Brigade, but was driven back by enemy fire, and fear of friendly artillery and naval gunfire, being directed at Orot Peninsula. In the south, on the other hand, 
the situation was slightly better. In the afternoon, 307th Infantry Regiment, the Corps Reserve, came ashore along with the 77th Division Headquarters, and although its aid was instantly requested, General Geiger, refused to commit his last reserve, so early in the battle. Meanwhile, after intense naval, artillery and aerial bombardment, the 22nd Marines, continued their advance north. The 1st Battalion, moved along the coast of Orot Peninsula, across the rice fields, interspaced with small hills. The 3rd Battalion, swung to the right and moved toward the Apra harbour side of the peninsula neck, while the 2nd Battalion, secured some higher ground at the southeast end of the harbour, blocking the road leading north out of the peninsula. By the end of the day, the 22nd Marines, closed off most of the peninsula neck as planned, and although the gap on the northern end remained open, the Japanese did not attempt to escape through it. At the same time, the 305th Regiment extended its area, moving northeast, and by the end of the day, they were holding all the high ground to the east. On the southern flank of the beachhead, during the morning, 306th Regiment replaced the 4th Marines, assuming responsibility for their part of the beachhead. Actions of the 306th Regiment, during the day, were limited only to skirmishing with enemy patrols and cleaning out caves and dugouts within the sector. On July 24, General Geiger, concerned about slow advance, issued orders for July 25, designed to complete the assault phase. The core main task, was linking the northern and southern beachheads, and capturing Orot Peninsula. The heaviest burden of this operation, would fall on the marine units, while the 77th Infantry Division, had the mission of holding its present lines, in the southern beachhead, with the 307th Regiment, held as a corps reserve. With the first light of day, on July 25, the 77th Division, began to consolidate its line, while the 3rd Division, pressed towards the high ground on its front. The advance on the northern beachhead, was a slow, grueling process. Marines encountered stubborn Japanese resistance, positioned on the commanding higher ground over rough terrain. Frequent enemy counterattacks slowed their advance even more. On the northern sector, a relatively intact 2nd Battalion of 9th Marines was attached to the 3rd Marines to give the badly battered 1st Battalion of 3rd Marines a chance to rest. By nightfall, 3rd Marines had blasted and burned their way through a barrier of enemy cave defenses, fighting by small arms at point-blank distances, taking individual positions in frontal assaults. Using flamethrowers, hand grenades and tanks, they successfully expanded the beachhead, by a few hundred meters in all directions. During these relentless and heavy firefights, the commanding officer of Company F of the 9th Marines, Captain Louis Wilson Jr., who later became the commander of the Marine Corps, displayed extraordinary leadership, courage, and organizational skills under fire, earning him the Medal of Honor. In the meantime, the 21st Marines in the center, advanced towards Mount Chochao, making very limited headway on heavy terrain, while the 9th Marines, advanced with ease south along the coast. On the south, Marines of the 1st Provisional Marine Brigade, completely sealed off the neck of Orot Peninsula, in preparation for its capture. The 22nd Marines, ran into a big mangrove swamp, and a dense line of pillboxes, that slowed their advance down. Nevertheless, during the heavy fighting, Marines managed, to destroy up to 12 Japanese tanks. Constant American pressure, relentless artillery fire and aerial bombardment, took a heavy toll on Japanese defenders, as they lost many first-rate troops. General Takashina, fully aware that his defensive line could collapse at any moment, had to do something. Since the American landings, he had been gathering forces into the rugged hills along Mount Tanjo, calling in his reserves from scattered positions all over the island, and by July 25, he had more than 5,000 men, mainly of the 48th Independent Mixed Brigade, and the 18th Regiment of the 29th Division, in place and ready to attack. The major counter-attack, 
was scheduled for the night from 25th on July 26, and according to plan, it was not supposed to be a disorganized Banzai charge, but rather a well-coordinated attack, aimed to split northern American beachhead, specifically targeting the rear area, ammunition, and supply dumps. As the night felt, Japanese probes and harassment began. Throughout the night, the attack intensified, and at about 4 a.m., the Japanese troops poured down the slopes, hitting the thin line held by the 3rd Marines. Soon, the attack spread, all along the 3rd Marine Division's front, with Japanese troops roaming the rear areas, as they slipped around the Marine perimeters, through valleys and ravines, leading to the beaches. What began as a coordinated counterattack with clearly defined targets, soon became a frenzy and disorganized Banzai charge. The 48th Independent Mixed Brigade, attacked the northern sector, with some attackers getting through the weakly manned gap, between the Marine battalions. Everyone in the rear area, who could carry a rifle, joined the defense. Howitzers lowered their barrels, and fired at point-blank range into the attackers. In the area of the 21st Marines, the human wave, consisting of the men from the 18th Regiment, struck hard against the 3rd Battalion, penetrated the line and attacked artillery, ammunition, and supply dumps. A group of about 50 Japanese, reached the divisional hospital. Doctors evacuated wounded patients, who fled to the beaches dragging heavily wounded, while likely wounded were armed and joined cooks, bakers, stretcher bearers, and corpsmen, to form the line that fought off the attackers. The hastily organized defenders, held the hospital against a determined Japanese attack, and successfully fought it off, until reinforcement arrived. The fierce fighting, went on all night, and didn't stop until noon on July 26. The Japanese troops, managed to get through the lines in several places, penetrating almost to the beach. With the daylight, the attack lost intensity, leaving Marines to spend most of the day, destroying the remaining infiltrators throughout the beachhead. On Orot Peninsula, the Japanese were ordered to attack the 22nd Marines, blocking the peninsula's neck in an attempt to break out, and join the main forces behind Mount Tainjo. At 2 a.m., they launched a Banzai attack near the left flank of the 22nd Marines, and after fierce combat, the 2nd Battalion of the 38th Regiment was virtually destroyed, leaving only scattered remnants, to defend the peninsula. During the night counterattack, the Japanese lost some 3,500 troops, along with about 95% of officers, including all regimental and most company and battalion commanders. The Marine casualties, were estimated to be about 200 to 300 dead, and several hundred more wounded. With the 48th Independent Mixed Brigade, and the 18th Regiment, completely destroyed during the counterattack, including troops trapped on Orot Peninsula, by July 26, the Japanese had lost more than half of their men stationed on the island, leaving General Takashina, in command of barely one-third of the island's garrison. Having no other option, Takashina ordered the survivors to fall back, and prepare positions in the northern half of the island, to prolong the defense of Guam as much as possible. While Marines were mopping up the remnants of Knight's attack, the Japanese began withdrawing into the northern part of the island, leaving only rearguards behind, who sometimes offered stiff resistance. For the following few days, the men of the 3rd Amphibious Corps, continued to expand the beachhead, finding almost no resistance. On July 28, the 305th Infantry Regiment, captured Mount Tainjo, and on the north, the 3rd Marine Division, reached Mount Chochao, closing the gap between two beachheads. On the same day, General Takashina was killed, while overseeing the withdrawal, leaving the only remaining senior officer on the island, General Hideyoshi Obata, commander of the 31st Army, who had just recently arrived from Palau's, in command of the battered Japanese garrison. By July 29, the Americans had already realized, that the Japanese were retreating, and began sending reconnaissance patrols, deep into the southern part of the island, which reduced the fighting on the island, to small skirmishes between patrols, and the Japanese rearguard. 
Meanwhile, at 7 a.m., on July 26, the 1st Marine Brigade, launched an attack on Orok Peninsula, preceded by heavy artillery preparation. The 4th and 22nd Marines, moved onto the peninsula, and although slowed down by the mangrove swamp, the Marines advanced steadily. Once they had worked their way through all bottlenecks, past the mangrove swamps at the base of the peninsula, the following day, Marines encountered the well-fortified positions, in front of Old Marine Barracks and its firing range, just next to Sume village. After a fierce fight, supported by tanks which destroyed the Japanese pillboxes and dugouts from point-blank range, on July 28, the Marines gained control over Marine Barracks and Sume, pushing the Japanese, into the last one-third of the peninsula. At 10 a.m., on July 29, men of the 1st Provisional Marine Brigade, supported by tanks, continued the attack on Orot, and pushed across the airstrip to the tip of the peninsula. Fighting was fierce, and fought at close distances, with the Japanese preferring to fight to the death, rather than surrender. Less than five hours after the attack began, the Marines had reached the western tip of the peninsula. At 4 p.m., Orot, was declared secure. The Japanese found defeat, difficult to accept. Suicides were common, with soldiers jumping off cliffs and hugging exploding grenades. Over 2,500 Japanese died on Orot, while Marines lost 115 killed, with 38 missing in action, and 721 wounded. By July 29, the assault operations, had cost the 3rd Amphibious Corps, 5,987 casualties, mainly in the Marine units, of which 958 were killed, 290 missing in action, and with 4,739 men wounded, while ahead of them, still lay a limestone plateau in the north, covered with extremely dense tropical forest, and remnants of Japanese troops, ready to fight, until the bitter end.